Well, hello, Charline. This is your devotional for Wednesday, August 12th. And I want to begin by asking you a question. Have you ever been in a cave? Have you ever been in a cave? I'm not asking if you've been spelunking. I'm not asking if you've done, uh, you know, climbing in a cave or exploring in a cave. Have you ever found yourself in a emotional, spiritual, relational cave? Because the psalm we're going to look at today, Psalm 142, in the prelude before the psalm, it says it was written by David while he was in a cave. He was in a literal cave, hiding out, but what I want you to listen for in this, this brief but powerful psalm is listen for the other kinds of caves he was in. I mean, he was literally physically in a cave hiding, but what's going on with him? And maybe you'll identify as you listen to David some of the caves you might be in or experience in lifetime, in your lifetime, and then figure out how to live in the midst of those difficult times of life. So listen to Psalm 142 and, and just try to identify what David's going through and how that might connect with your life. Psalm 142, a mascal of David when he was in a cave, a prayer. Here's verse one. I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him I tell my trouble. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. In the path where I walk, people have hidden a snare for me. Look and see, there is no one at my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for my life. I cry to you, Lord, I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me, rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. And there's a lot in this short little prayer. I want you to think for a moment about what cave you might be in. Maybe relationally you're in turmoil and you feel you're kind of stuck in a dark place relationally. Maybe financially you feel stuck in a cave. You feel like, I don't know quite how to get out of here or it's just a dark, difficult time. Maybe spiritually you feel distant from God. Uh, maybe you're watching from a literal cave. I don't know, but I think all of us experience those moments that feel like we're stuck somewhere. And just, just a few observations from this powerful short psalm. First of all, the opening two verses, uh, David is just honest. God, this is hard. This is painful. What, what, what I'm going through, I'm crying out to you. I'm looking to you because I can't take it anymore. If you're feeling that way, if you're feeling stuck somewhere difficult, talk to God about it. Share with God. Don't hold back because he knows your heart. He knows what you're going through. And there's something powerful about being honest with God in those difficult times. And then in verse three, you read this. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. David is clear that he's looking to God in this difficult time. Whatever cave you're in, whatever struggle you're facing, whatever conflict you're enduring, understand that God is the one who sustains. God is the one who watches over you. And it's in those tough times that we sometimes turn away from God or forget to turn to him because it's so difficult and so painful. But just turn to God again and again and again and he will be your refuge. He will be your strength. Then as the, as the psalm goes on, uh, David three times talks about uh, just the way that he's, that he's feeling alone. He talks about no one is with me. No one, just listen to these words. And, and, and remember in the ancient world, the way you made a point was you made the point three times. And notice in this short part of the passage, three times he says the same thing, really declaring he feels so alone. He feels, he feels so abandoned. And so in the second part of verse three, it says, it is you who watch over my way in the path where I walk. People have hidden a snare for me. Look and see, there is no one at my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no re refuge and no one cares for my life. No one's at my right hand. No one's concerned for me. No one cares for my life. You get the point after three times. Man, I feel alone in this cave. You may feel that today. Maybe, maybe you're kind of doing the sheltering in place, not going out a whole lot alone, and you're a, a single person in a home alone, and you feel like I'm literally, my home is like a cave, and there's no one else to be around me. Man, in those moments, you need Jesus, and you need the fellowship of God's people. 
I want to encourage you to get into a small group in the church, even online. Come, come to a Sunday morning outdoor service if you can, or come in your car and watch me your car, but have someone smile at you, say hello to you. I've been talking to people who have said, I haven't really interacted with anybody for four months. Now, we're not made for that. And so find some way to connect with family, with friends, online or in person, but don't be alone in this time. And then in verse five, we read this. I cry to you, Lord, I say, you are my refuge. Just a moment before he says, I have no refuge. And then David says, well, I do. You're my refuge. This cave I'm in is not a refuge. Hard times aren't a refuge for me, but God, you're my refuge in whatever I'm walking through. And then finally, out of, out of all of this pain in this, in this season of struggle that, that David's going through, he really turns his heart to God. And he says, listen to my cry, for I'm in desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me. Set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. David says, even in this, God, my desire is to praise your name. My desire is to lift you up. I want to encourage you in whatever cave you find yourself in at any time of your life, keep praising God. Think of the apostle Paul in the jail in Philippi, where he's singing to God after he's been beaten and he's locked in the stocks and he's in prison and he doesn't know what is ahead, but he knows who is with him. And he knows that even in that cave of a prison, Paul can sing praise to God. You, you unleash chains, maybe not physically or literally, but certainly spiritually when you can praise God in difficult times. So I want to encourage you to read Psalm 142 anytime you feel like you're stuck in a cave and ask God to help you praise in that moment and through that moment until you're out in the fresh air, breathing deeply without a mask on, enjoying life in the beauty of creation. Until then, let's keep crying out to God whatever cave we're in. God bless you. Hang in there through this week and we'll see you Sunday at any of our three online services or at both of our on-campus services. Register for those and we will see you for worship soon. God bless you.